In our last module, I showed you the concept of focus stacking, how to acquire different images with different things in focus. Well, what's pretty cool here is that those images can be merged together. You might be familiar with how Photoshop can merge an HDR image or merge together several photos into a panoramic shot. Well, it can also do the same thing with a focus stack. It has the ability to line up the details. Now, hopefully, the image is shot off of a tripod, so it's rock solid. But even subtle movements that are in the photo can be compensated for. Then, Photoshop will intelligently automatically blend the images together using a series of masks and minor color adjustments. This creates an image that's literally impossible to shoot. And the great thing is, is that it's impossible to shoot it if it was one exposure, but because we've shot multiple exposures, it's not. And what's really cool is that Photoshop makes it really simple. Let's take a look at a very simple focus stack set. You'll notice two images. In the first image, the foreground flower is in focus. And in the second, the background flower is. I'd like to combine these two together. All right, that's pretty straightforward, actually. Let's first process them as raw. We'll select the two and right-click to open in Camera Raw. This brings up the Camera Raw dialog where you can make all of your standard adjustments. Let's dial in a proper white balance. I'll do Auto here, but roll that just a little bit and adjust the temperature slightly. Pretty good. We'll balance out the exposure and put some clarity in so those flowers really pop. A little bit of vibrance and lift the shadows so we don't have quite as much mud there inside some of the darker recesses in the petals. All right, that feels pretty good across the board. I'll jump over to sharpening and bring that up a bit. And then option drag on the masking slider to make sure that only certain areas are being affected. I like that. I could do a quick before and after comparison. And that feels much better. So I'll select both images and click the synchronize button and tell it to make sure that both images use the same adjustment. Now that that's done, if we just go back here to the single view, you'll see that both of them are very similar from a color and exposure point of view, but we have different areas in focus. Let's click done and close that and now we can load those into a stack. To start, double click on one image and send it into Photoshop. We'll just open that image up. Now, choose File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. This allows you to browse and locate the files you want to use. There we go. And we'll select both images and click Open. Make sure you choose the Attempt to Automatically Align and choose OK. Both of those loaded into a new document, and that's good. On the left-hand side here, I have that original file if I need it. Now, with both images selected, I'm going to choose to blend these together. By grabbing the Move tool, you'll notice an option here that you likely missed before called Auto Align. When you click that, it'll make sure that everything is aligned. And it looked like it already did a pretty good job the first time, so I'll stop there. Now that we've got both images selected, note that they're highlighted in the Layers panel. That can be done by shift-clicking. I'll choose Edit, Auto Blend Layers. This will go through and give me the choice. When we made a panoramic image, we used a version of this with Photo Merge to blend a panorama. But you'll see here an option for stacking the images. If I choose that second option, it's going to analyze them and attempt to mask the two images together. It takes a little while as it analyzes the content, but when it's done, it creates a layer mask between the two. You'll note, for example, that it cut out and blended the two images together. So, pretty interesting how it chose to do that. If you decide that you don't want all of this area back here included, that's simple. On the top layer here, I could just click on the layer mask. And now, with my paintbrush selected, I could paint out those areas. Just get a nice big brush, right bracket key will do that, and make sure you have white loaded. Now, you could paint on that mask. I'd recommend using a 
full opacity brush, but you notice as I brush that in, it's blending back to the more shallow depth of field for the top copy. This lets me preserve the flower on the right, but blend back to the more out of focus bits of the top image. That works well for me. So what I have here is both flowers in focus. You'll recall it was impossible with the closeness to the flower to set both of these images in focus without getting the background coming through as well. But by using the focus stacking technique, I was able to combine and composite the two images. You'll note there that we laid this one on top and essentially the higher quality image came through. Remember, it's pretty simple. If you need to, you can load up a selection and this might make it simpler for you to paint the two images in. By going over that edge there, you can blend it together and then deselect. That did a very nice job there of letting me mix the two photos together and I'm very happy with the composited image. Remember, when that's all done, piece of cake, you can continue to work. Now, in this particular case, I'll just go over that edge just a little bit more and let the background blur. Remember, all I'm doing is restoring that top photo on the left. On the right though, the other photo is peeking through. That looks pretty cool. Let's grab the crop tool and simply crop to a five by seven here. I'll swap those values. And you know what? Let's go with 16 by nine given the shape of this image. That feels better. We're seeing a bit more. I'll make a nice desktop or something for a digital frame. Press return to apply it. And then of course you could take advantage of any other adjustments like your curves adjustments. Remember, option clicking on the word auto will allow you to fix the contrast there and snap the midtones. And of course, you can use the on image tool to further refine. That looks better to me. And I'm pretty much happy with it. I'm just gonna balance out the vibrance adjustments here, pulling up the reds and down the overall saturation, which will pull down those greens a bit. There we go. And the image is finished. Two photos to make one.